Yeah. What's up, joiners? And welcome to Wednesday. And as promised, I'm here to teach you guys about how I go about figuring out what airspace I'm in. First off, I want to give a shout out to James, aka Skittles Souter. <laughs> yeah, I had to put that in there. But either way, shout out to him because he actually has been a huge help in helping me learn how to do all this. He's the one who showed me the first website that I'm going to talk about. So big shout out to you, James. You're the man. Thank you so much for helping out. It was a while ago, but either way, it was super appreciated. You helped save part of my life. So either way, joiners, we're going to jump in and talk about what I talked about on Monday was how difficult it is to use the website SkyVector. SkyVector is a website that is given to you by the FAA after you learn how to do the Part 107 to be able to determine what the airspaces you are. They pretty much teach you how to read a sectional chart and then they give you one that's digital that is almost completely useless because it has no tools to help you actually find out exactly where you are and what you're doing. So, of course, wherever there is a space in difficult things, especially coming from the government, private entities typically come to fill it in. And there are a couple that have done that. There's actually quite a few that have done that, but I found my two favorite, and that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. And I'm sure you guys have your favorites too, so I'm always open to learning more, just like I told you, James showed me some things, so maybe you can as well. So show me what you guys have, but I'm gonna show you what I got too. So first of all, I use one of them, a website is called 1800wxbrief.com. This website is the truth. Um, this one actually helps you to, um, the big thing about this website is not only does it give you the map and show you where you are, it also has you, allows you to submit notums and dronums to the FAA for every flight you're doing, which lets other pilots and everybody in the area know that you're going to be performing UAV or UAS activities in the area while you're flying, which technically there are some areas. Now this is the gray area that me and James debated about. Tell me more if you guys know more. Is that he claims you have to submit one every single time you fly professionally as a commercial pilot. Um, I said that wasn't any part of anything I learned for part 107, but I have no problem doing that. I just don't remember being 100% a requirement. But either way, he showed me some stuff that was like on a website and I showed him like pretty much here's the books they gave you to study for the FAA, you show me where it is. And it became one of those things. But either way, um, I think this is incredible and I think it's useful to be able to use. Now the way that it works, as soon as you sign up for, well you have to sign up first. Uh, 1800 WX Brief is not just a website you just you know, log on to or you just get in and it just works. You have to sign in, um, log in. So as soon as you get there, just do the login process, it's super easy. And after you get logged in, this is what your page looks like. Um, and there's a lot of options. And honestly I haven't used most of them because pretty much all I ever use is go to the UAS tab right here and then I go to planning. And then after you get into the planning, it brings you to this screen where you're just like, oh look, this is just asking for data input. What could I possibly do here? I don't know, let me put, input some data. Um, and this is actually meant for being able to submit the NOTAM to the, you, you know, to the uh, FAA so that everybody can know you're flying and all that, but you can use it for something else too. So for me, over here on the left side of the screen, as you guys can see, there's the operating area. And this is really where it gets interesting. So first of all, for the radius, you need to put something in. Um, so I always put one nautical mile because it's a pretty you know, easy thing to do, even though a lot of the times when I apply for stuff, I only need like a quarter nautical mile, but who am I? Either way, I keep saying either way, I'm sorry. Um, one nautical mile to the area of the center point. And to put the center point in, you have to put the address in. So we're just gonna go ahead and put 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, I don't know if you guys know where that is. Is that in Charleston? No, West Virginia. Da, da, da. We're gonna use the one in Miami Beach. I meant for that to be the White House, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and just like just go with just go with the go with it. Um, it changes what your address is into um, what is that longitude and latitude, and then you're like, okay, cool, blah blah blah, and then you click the map button. And after you click the map button, what pops up is a incredibly small but useful little screen here. And what this screen is, is super useful. And what it does is it shows you exactly the area that you were looking to fly in. Now, right now, it looks just like a Google map, right? But what we've been talked about before, like we talked about on Monday, the thing that is really helpful for you to have is a sectional chart, especially if you know exactly where you are flying in that sectional chart. And if you look up here on the top right of the screen, there is a satellite, sec there's a satellite just like Google Maps. You have a street, you have a satellite, and then you have a sectional chart. Bam, there it is. You have a sectional chart right here that you can zoom in, you can zoom out, and you can look exactly at the sectional chart, the same sectional chart you have on SkyVector, but it gives you a address pointed part of exactly where you'll be flying. So you can look at this and determine exactly what the airspace you're flying in, so you'll know if you're allowed to or not allowed to fly there. So you can look and say, oh, this circle right here, oh my God, I'm right next to Miami Airport, and I'm also within, am I within that? I don't know. Yeah, actually, no. So I, if I was over here, if I was over here, then I'd be a part of the 
surface to 7,000 feet or 700, whatever. Surface to 770 feet, 700 feet, I think, or 7,000. I think it's 7,000. Surface to 7,000 feet, can't do it. Um, can't fly there, you just can't fly. You can't do it. You're not gonna fly that close to the airport anyway, but we're not flying there. We're actually flying at the 1,500 to 7,000 feet, which is right up here, and we are actually most likely perfectly okay to fly here. Um, we're on this little island that's far enough away to be able to do that. And the way that we know that is because we're outside of this section here. You see this blue line right here? We're outside of that. We're inside of this area here in this blue line, which means we'd be okay to fly our drone there because we'd be flying legally under that class, air, class B airspace. We're under it, so we're under the uh, upside down cake thing. If you learn about the Part 107, you'll learn all about that. But we're okay to fly here because we're flying in class G airspace. Now, what you also are gonna find is that, all right, well that wasn't, um, the, still not the easiest thing in the world. If you don't need to know how to read a sectional chart, you're still just like, how do I know how to do this? There is an entire separate video we've done on that where we talk about the Part 107 study guides and the way that you should do that. Check it out, it's really nice. But if you don't wanna go through all that, another incredibly easy way to do this is to go to this website, AirMap. I love this website. AirMap is the most simple thing ever because what you have here is a search bar where you can say area of interest. I can put in 1600 Pennsylvania, if I can spell Vania Avenue. I spelled it wrong. And Miami, there it is, bam, same spot. And it's cool because it like moves you over to the place. Um, sorry for my internet, it's not moving all that fast right now. I blame, I blame cameraman Tony, we're at his house actually. So Tony, step your game up bro. Um, so look, here we are. We are now here and we are, in a, um, we are at Miami in the same spot that we were before. As you can see, the map is much bigger. And look at that, look how big that orange area is right there. Why, oh why would this orange area be so gargantuan? And it looks like it is, if you click on it, it tells you selected advisories. That's an airport. It means you can't fly there. Why can't you fly there? Because if you look over here on the left, you see what is your mission. These are the different um, criteria that you're applying to what the map is showing you and the data is showing you. Well, what if I'm not flying for fun? What if I am, let me click that, I am a part a Section 333 exemption holder or I'm a Part 107 certified. I am Part 107 certified, so I click that. And the whole entire map changes. Isn't that crazy? I love it. So now it's giving me the air, air map information as well as the uh, 107 information. And the way the area that I wanted to fly, again, was right over here. There's nothing there. Like I said before, when I looked at the sectional chart, it was telling me all those issues. Now that big orange space isn't there. Now why is that big orange space so huge for the fly for funds? Because legally, the way that it still works for recreational flyers is that you still can't fly within five miles of an airport because you don't know how to read a sectional chart because you didn't take the test to show you could. So this is now showing me, this is what you, where you can fly as a Part 107 certified pilot because you understand how close you can be to an airport depending on what the airspace is and which direction it's going because you read the sectional chart. So here it is. I love this because it's just like super simple, a really quick way to check an address. You just type in the address and you're just like, oh, there it is. And you're good. And it makes me so happy because I, this is, I love this. So whenever a client contacts me, typically the first site that I'm gonna go to is actually AirMap because it's just so much faster and I can just get a really quick read and say, okay, cool, I'm not in the airspace. And then my double check, I go to 1800WX. Um, that website to be able to just double check and actually look at a real sectional chart because I am trained to be able to do that and understand it as you should be if you are a commercial pilot. So you're looking at it, you're like, got it, we're cool. So yeah, this is what I do to be able to quickly figure out what area or what airspace I'm flying in. If there's any TFRs, which is a temporary flight restriction or any other restrictions, they show up on the flight service or normally on the air map because they also do have that data saying that even if you are not in this uh, specific airspace as A, B, C, D, or E, I mean B, C, D, or E, because A is way up, um, then there also might be a temporary flight restriction because of, I don't know, a baseball game or something like that. They typically have flight restrictions and you can't fly or military stuff. There's a million different reasons of different airspaces you shouldn't fly in. But having multiple sources of, to be able to check to make sure you're not in spare, uh, airspace you're not supposed to be flying in is what you need to be because on set and be, in the pre-production and whatever the job is, you are the expert. You have to understand that. You can't depend on the municipalities. You can't depend on the client. You can't depend on anybody else to understand where you can fly your drone but yourself. So to do that, you should have multiple ways of doing that. So I have three layers. I have AirMap, I have 18, um, 1800W, whatever it is, 
I can't ever remember it, I'm so sorry. 1800wxbrief.com, as well as Sky Vector, which is my last, last, last resort. Um, so you use those three websites, then you should be able to know what airspace you're flying in at any time, especially if you can read a sectional chart. And, you know, stay safe and have fun. Droners, thank you for checking out this incredibly information dense version of our Wednesday video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please, I'm sure I made some form of mistake in this video, so go ahead and check it out. Let me know in the comments. I always like to get your critiques. As always, you can find more super dense information about flying drones here because we have more videos that do these kind of things. Or you can check out our opening video because it's pretty dope. As always, we really love when you guys support us and there's three different ways to do that. One of them is you can be fly like I am with a Droner t-shirt because these things actually are really nice. It's very comfortable and it's very stylish and people can ask about why you so fly. You also can go ahead and subscribe to our channel because we do give all this information to you because we want you to watch it. So show us you're doing that. And if you could check out our Patreon page, that is literally the most financially way to help us do this because it takes a lot of time and energy to do this. So please help us. Thank you. And as always, make sure you stay fly.